The time has come to begin on the tea gown. I've long since completed the morning corset, although at the point of recording this, I have yet to actually finish filming and editing the video. Um, I'm procrastinating doing that, but I've gotten the uh, mock-up for the tea gown that's going to go over it pretty much done. Um, I didn't make sleeves for the mock-up since I knew how much I would need to lengthen them, so I just altered the pattern. Uh, I'm also having a little bit of trouble with the collar, but I can uh, fix that on the real thing. But Okay, you can't see that at all. But just take my word for it. It looks... Oh, here. So there it is. I'm having trouble with this. There it is. Um, I have this fabric from fabric.com. Really challenging name that I can see why I couldn't remember that one. Um, it's a reproduction of it. Actually, it's a, a mid 19th century fabric, but I thought that it would be perfect for a tea gown. You can see it's a much, uh, it's a pretty crazy print. Um, and these really elaborate crazy prints were actually less expensive in the 19th century than more, some of the more subdued ones because it's easy to hide printing mistakes in prints like this. So um, oftentimes you would buy this fabric and uh, it was cheap and it had uh, errors in it. But um, you didn't really mind if it was just for an at-home garment. Um, so it's gonna be made out of this. Um, I've ordered some lace to trim the Bertha collar. Um, that still has not yet arrived. Uh, but the first thing to do is to uh, iron this fabric. And then I will uh, get back to you when I'm laying the pattern down. All right, so this is what we've got so far. And I'm sorry for filming vertically, but this is really the only way that I can get enough of the uh, thing into frame because it really did not work when I tried to film horizontally last time. Um, but this is what we've got so far. I've got the uh, pleats in the back arranged. I've just got these pinned here for now, but it's stitched down at top. Um, and in the end, something just happened and I'm not sure what. Um, when it's finished, uh, this part will be kind of hugged inwards to my back, but this part will be flowing loosely. Um, it's inspired by the uh, robes a la Francaise of the 18th century, um, but it was really, really uh, popular for tea gowns. Um, so I'm not sure if I went over the history of tea gowns at all, but this was an informal kind of garment that women could wear at home. Um, you could wear it to receive friends. You would not wear it out of the house. Uh, it's, it's kind of a mixture between a dress and a bathrobe. Um, and they would often be made out of, uh, I mean, you could have, a wealthier woman would make them out of silks and whatever, but, but um, women who are not wealthy, like myself, would um, make them, like I said, out of these cheaper fabrics. Um, I'm sewing this one out of synthetic thread. Uh, because I could not find a natural thread, a natural fiber thread that matched the color. It's a constant struggle, isn't it? You can either color match or you can uh, use uh, accurate thread, but I decided to go with color matching. The, the fabric itself is 100% uh, cotton though. Um, so this would have been worn um, for tea parties, essentially, that's where it got its name, um, by women just in their houses. Um, again, you wouldn't wear it outdoors. Um, in the 1920s, when women started to be uh, admitted to cocktail hour, it was replaced by the cocktail dress. Now, I don't really like 20s fashion at all, and I also don't approve of alcohol, so clearly the cocktail dress was not where I was going to go, <laughs> not what I was going to make for uh, historical loungewear. Um, oh, this is perfect! Somebody on the Facebook, the Costumer's Facebook page, uh, suggested a historical loungewear challenge, so this was a really well-timed coincidence. Um, so this is the uh, the perfect uh, solution for me. So now that I've gotten this uh, done, it was actually supposed to have uh, half inch seam allowances. Um, the these are slightly small because I, in my uh, infinite wisdom, misread the uh, measuring thing on my sewing machine. But it'll still be fine. So I'm going to go through and 
at least my intention right now is to go through and, and um, kind of overlock these all by hand, just stitch over them. Um, but they are very long and I'm likely going to get tired of that. Um, fortunately though, the overlocking stitch was invented in the late 1880s. So if you're doing 1890s, overlocking is at least theoretically accurate. Now I've never seen it in any original garments, but it, it is at least theoretically accurate. So I might uh, give up <laughs> and transition over to that. Um, but now I'm going to work on cutting out the front panels. So I will do that and I will check in after I've done that. All right, now the bad news is that I did in fact have to piece this front piece, this front bit to uh, be able to sew it together. The good news is that, as we all know, piecing is period. The bad news is that in order to piece it with the scraps that I had, I, need to, I needed to sew it on upside down. You can see the pattern switches directions. The good news is that it is in a very kind of out of the way spot, uh, down by the floor underneath my arm, and uh, the pattern is so wild that you can't really see it. So now the next step is to um, sew in these uh, pleats here at the front. And uh, then I need to sew up these darts under the arms and the waist, uh, the waist fastening is gonna get put into this dart and then it's gonna come around to the front. So I need to cut out the waist fastening and put that in. Um, so for this next part, I'm going to need to be fitting it uh, on myself in my underwear, which means I've got to get changed into my morning corset, which I'm going to be wearing with this. Um, so I'm going to do that and I'll check back in with you when I've gotten to the next uh, stage, the next step. I have at this point done up these uh, side gores under the arm and put in the belt. which will come around the front like that. And close it. I've also turned over this edge and I've also put in a pleat. You can't really see it. A pleat right here though. Um, you can see it down here. Uh, and I, after I'd sewn this all up, I realized that I set the pleat completely <laughs> incorrectly. This is not how the pattern told me to do it, but I think it's fine. And, um, you know, it's not, it's still taking in the same amount of fabric. So I think it's okay. Now, the instructions say to do the Bertha collar next, and it's supposed to be put here, and then the yoke will go over top of that, so all of the raw edges are in here, encased inside. But um, I kind of like the idea of putting the yoke on now, and then having the Bertha collar just kind of tacked onto the outside. I think that looks better. Uh, also, the lace that I ordered to edge the Bertha collar has not yet arrived, although I did order it a month and a half ago. Um, coronavirus is making the shipping process take a long time, so I can't start on the, um, on the collar yet because I don't have the lace, or on the Bertha yet because I don't have the lace, um, and I want to keep on working right now. So, um, for those two reasons, I am going to, um... Put on the uh, yoke first and then I'll put on the Bertha collar uh, towards the end of the process. Um, I might actually also put the sleeves, I probably will put the sleeves on before I do the um, Bertha collar because I think it'll be easier to put them on um, without the collar, the Bertha there. Um, so that's the plan. So I will get back to you once the yoke is on. I have the yoke on. Doesn't look very good right now, but it will look a lot better when it's got all of the, uh, you know, the button pocket and everything on it. And now I'm working on the sleeves. And to make the sleeves puffy, since I'm not gonna wanna wear my sleeve bustles with this, I've gotten some organdy and I'm going to cut that out into strips and um, sew that along the top part of the sleeve in the, in the gathered area just to make it puff out more. Um, so I'll check back with you when I've gotten the sleeves sewn on. So a little bit of a gather there, just kind of give it more volume. I'm not putting organdy there because that would be strange. But <laughs> it was like 
gigantic those sleeves are. You can see my, my slippered feet for uh, comparison. Well now, progress has been made. Now, you might notice the uh, lack of uh, organdy in the sleeves. They're kind of lying flat. Uh, and that is because I broke not one, not two, but three gathering threads trying to gather, gather up that accursed stuff. Um, and I eventually just gave up because I, <laughs> I just wanted to get the sleeves on. Um, but I think that it's okay. I mean, they still are uh, floofy enough. Uh, I don't really mind. Um, I also got uh, right away and stitched up the front and put on the front facings for the buttons. Um, I changed this around a little bit. I feel kind of weird about grabbing my mannequin right on the breast. I changed these around a little bit. Um, the facings, uh, it's supposed to have kind of buttons here and then uh, a hidden button facing here, but I like the idea of having buttons actually showing. So I put on the facings. Um, I also, when I was trying it on, realized that there was no way I was going to get this yoke to sit correctly without a dart here. So I just pinned this dart in and I'm going to sew that on. And another one over here. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I also made a little bit of a mistake sewing this, uh, button facing on. It's a little bit crooked. So I'm going to make all of those, uh, changes. Um, and then I think I also want to tighten the sleeves up a little bit because I want it to just be a poof of fullness up here and then relatively slender from the elbow down. So I'm going to take this part of the sleeve in just a little bit, just to make it a little bit more narrow. Um, so I'm going to do those things and then I'll get back to you. I still, I'm not going to be able to do the Bertha collar because the lace has still not arrived yet. Um, and then when it arrives, I'm not sure, I might take up some of this facing and kind of tuck it underneath here and have it be finished in here, or I might just kind of have it finish here and hang down. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, but I'm going to do the things I just mentioned and then I'll get back to you. Bye. That's what we've gotten so far. Um, the front facing is on. I've made all of the necessary adjustments. It's very, very dark in here because it's raining. This window. It's cloudy and raining outside. There was even some thunder. Um, so I put in the darts. You can hardly even see that they're there. Um, and I've started to put in the front fastenings. Now I was going to do actual buttons, but then I realized that I'd have to have the buttonhole coming all the way out to here if I were going to keep this um, in the correct space because the buttons would want to have slide out to here. So I'm um, attaching it with or having it closed with hooks and bars um, and they're alternating. You can see there's a hook here, a bar here, and a hook here and then on the other side there's a bar. Well actually that's an eye because I didn't realize I had bars so I'm going to take that eye out and replace it with a bar. There's, so there's going to be a bar here, there's a hook here, um, and then there's a bar here and it's going to be so on and so forth up there. That's pretty... Did my lace arrive? Nah. That's uh, quite typical in 19th century garments. You see that a lot and it just kind of creates this lock. It um, Hooks generally need some sort of uh, a certain amount of, of tension or pressure to kind of keep them hooked, um, but you don't need that as much if you alternate them. So it just makes it a lot more steady uh, and firm. And then I'm just sewing on these artificial, um, or not artificial, they're, they're real buttons. They're uh, lovely mother of pearl uh, buttons. I absolutely adore shell buttons and mother of pearl buttons. Um, but they're not actually going to be doing anything, they're just, they're only fake. Um, and I also tried to sew on the collar, um, but it wasn't falling right, it wasn't, it just didn't work right. And I finally realized because that was because there was no collar stand in the original pattern. Um, and uh, I know that it is possible to do collars without collar stands. I've seen it before, I've seen it in some uh, store-bought things that I own back when I still bought clothes. Um, I'd seen a falling collar with the collar stands, but I could not for the life of me figure out how to make it work. So I just stole this collar stand from another pattern and just lengthened it. Um, the pattern is going to, the collar is going to be a little bit loose on me, um, but I did that intentionally because I don't want it to be an incredibly tightly fitting collar because this is a casual garment. So I just put this collar stand on um, and I'm going to put a falling collar on top of it coming out of the top. Um, just to make that work. Um, and I also, of course, need to finish 
putting in the fastenings, but what I want to do right now is put in the waist stay. So the waist stay is this, this uh, dress also does not fit this mannequin quite correctly. My mannequin's name is Maria um, after that diary that I've told you about. Um, so the waist stay, oh gosh, the lighting. Come on. Um, is designed to make it fall correctly. So it's got these, these pleats here, these Watteau pleats, um, which because of this fabric, you can't really see them. Um, so they're designed, it's, they're designed to flow loose, but the center right here is going to sit close to the back and then these side pieces here are going to sit close to the back. So the actual pleat pieces will be flowing loose, but the rest of it will be snug to the back. So, uh, it's going to be tacked to the waist tape. The waist tape is just going to be a piece of twill tape. So it's going to be, the dress is going to be tacked to the waist tape here. And then on these, uh, seams here. So these pleats will just be flowing loose, but the rest of it will still sit close to the back. So that's what I'm going to do now, since I have these pins in here kind of marking where I need the waist tape to be, and they've been in there since the very beginning, and I'm ready to take them out. So that's what I'm going to do, and then I'll get back to you. I have finished the front fastenings, and I have finished with the belt. I've got it closing with three hooks and eyes, and there's a bit of boning on here just to keep it from collapsing. But I've run into a problem with the back pleats. They sit very nicely on my mannequin, but for some reason when I put the dress on, these pleats do that on both sides. And I cannot figure out how to fix that. I've unpicked and restitched this so many times I cannot make it sit correctly. So I think what I'm going to do is unpick this one more time and uh, change the pleats a little bit. I'm going to copy this fashion plate here. I'm going to put it up on screen. And I think having this one big pleat down the back is not as pretty as this style here, but it um, should solve the problem of having the pleats buckling out. So I'm going to do that. I am so ready to be done with this project. I have, I'm just, I'm ready to be done with this. Um, so hopefully that should be finished today and then I can hem the stupid thing. And also the lace is still not arrived yet. It's still in China. Um, and I consider just buying different lace, but I really, really like the lace that I ordered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the Bertha collar and put it on, and I'm just going to stitch the bottom of it with a very, very loose stitch so that when the lace does arrive, I can easily unpick that and just put the lace in. Um, yes, so I'm going to deal with these back pleats again and... I'll check back with you once I've gotten them restitched on. I'm also going to have to use sewing needles as pins because the pin cushion is gone. Gone where, you ask? I would love to know. <gasps> what is that? That is a pin cushion that at one time looked like a tomato, but then the dogs chewed it up. And now it's just a red ball. <gasps> oh, I'm so happy. I reversed the pleats and it has made all the difference. I'm so happy with this. It's very exciting. It's also made it a lot more full around the hem somehow. I'm not quite sure how that happened. I think just because it's kind of more focused outwards instead of being focused inwards, it's kind of made it all work a lot better. So I'm very pleased with this and now I'm going to make the Bertha. And like I said before, it's just going to be stitched very loosely around the bottom so I can take that out when I get the lace. And I'm also going to have it just tacked very loosely onto the actual dress so I can easily take it off when the lace finally arrives, if ever. Focus. Focus. Okay, here we go. Bird. Bird, bird. The yoke has been attached. If you look at it very closely, focus. Not going to. If you look at it very closely, you'll see that it is poorly done, but from a distance, if you squint, 
It looks all right. Um, the yoke was actually supposed to be twice as long as it is, um, but I had to, or not the yoke, I'm sorry, the Bertha, was supposed to be twice as long as it is, but I um, had to make the yoke significantly smaller than the original pattern. So I, when I tried the uh, full length yoke on, it was just kind of like, um, there was way, way, way too much of it. So I uh, cut it in half and this is working much better. So now the last thing, oh, also the lace, as you can see, it is not there. Uh, so eventually the lace will arrive, I hope. It's still somewhere in China. Um, and I should just order different lace. I know I should, but the lace that I ordered is so pretty and it just looks so of the period. Um, I have my heart set on it, so I'm just gonna wait. And when it arrives, I'll just unpick this, stick it in there, top stitch it on, it'll be fine. Um, and it's probably gonna hang down. I think it's probably about as wide as the yoke is now, or as the uh, Bertha is now. So it's probably gonna hang down to about there which will be a little bit extra, but it'll be fine. So now all I need to do is hem it. So this project is finally almost done. I will be able to wear this dress tomorrow, for which I am incredibly grateful. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna hem it. So the yoke is now on, but you can see how it wants to kind of fold in like this, and it's not doing it so much on the dress form, but um, when I'm wearing it, it's very, very pronounced. It wants to fold up like that, um, which I do not like at all. So what I'm going to have to do is put a dart in this, or not a dart, what's the opposite of a dart? Um, a gore. I'm going to have to put a gore in this. So what I'm going to do is cut the yoke down the middle, <laughs> like that, or not the yoke, the um, Bertha, down the middle, and insert a gore so that it won't be flapping about. If it's not one thing, it's another with this project. Oh, another thing, my petticoat is about half an inch too long, so it sticks out the bottom. So instead of um, doing anything fancy and like fixing the petticoat, actually I'm just going to put in a lazy tuck around the back of the petticoat to take it up about an inch and a half. Um, that's something you see a lot in, in antique petticoats is uh, somebody has gotten a new dress or for some reason needed to shorten it a little bit and they put in this um, very, very lazy looking tuck. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and hopefully after I have made the tuck and um, put in the gore, I'll be done with this, or as done as I will be until the lace arrives. I broke down and ordered an, another bit of lace since I just have no idea when the first lace I ordered is going to arrive. Um, but the other bit of lace that I ordered also looks very correct for the period and um, you know, now when the original lace does arrive, then I'll just have a stockpile of lace. And I can think of worse things of stockpiling. So, I'm going to make the cut and the dart. Wish me luck, I'm terrified to cut into this thing. Okay, bye-bye. The replacement lace has arrived. It's not the lace I originally ordered, that one is still coming. Um, I have no idea when it will get here. Uh, I think this is very pretty. I love the eyelet lace. So this is just going to go be inserted into the end of the Bertha. Um, I think it would be a little bit long if I did it like this. Um, I think that would come down a little bit too far. So I think I'm going to insert it into the Bertha here. So these little stars up here, or flowers that are there, are not going to be visible. So yes, I think it will come down to about about there. So I'm going to pick oh, pick open the bottom of the Bertha and trim this off and uh, I'll show you when it's done. I pinned the lace in, decided that it looked colossally stupid, took it out, stitched this up again, and now the dress is done. <sighs> I'm so happy to be done with this project. Um, you're not getting a very good view of it now, but there will be uh, about 30 seconds later of me twirling around. Um, I'm so happy to be done, done with this project. Paired it with a skirt lifter. Don't technically need a skirt lifter with a tea gown, but you know, maybe I will end up being chased by monsters and need to have my skirt lifted up. You never know. Um, 
So I really hope you enjoyed this project, um, and I hope you'll stick around, because the next project might have something to do with uh, silkworms, or more accurately, the fabric that is made from silkworms. Um, I've, I phrased that in the worst possible way. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be working with silk in the next in the next project um, for the first time, so I'm very excited about that. So I hope you'll stick around for it. Bye. And now enjoy this clip of me going to pick up the dog, then realizing that his paws are muddy and putting him down in a hurry. Now I'm going to go and smell a rose hip that has not smelled like anything for about a week. Now I'm twirling because I don't know what else to do. Sleeves. Twirling some more because why not? Have to do it.